guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Datadog. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, cloud and containers technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Get started. So <clears throat> now I'm going to discuss about what is observability and how it is different from monitoring. So sometimes what we do, we do not focus on the monitoring and setting up observability. Why? Uh, because we think our host is giving sufficient information. So uh, when I say monitoring, that means I'm not talking about the high level monitoring. I'm talking about the detailed monitoring, the monitoring in depth. So you can get insight and you can forecast the future also. That means the issues might pop up after one month, but you are having a data today and you can forecast that. This kind of situation I'm, I'm talking about. So many people say, hey, we have AWS, Azure, Google Cloud and all we are running on it we are giving sufficient uh, stats so that's a common mistake which we do the big mistake which we which we as a project we do we think okay we are already stable established player without monitoring and we are number one right now generating lots of money and why don't we have to spend energy our energy on the security and monitoring and stuff like that we don't need that so that's one big mistake uh, we, as a project, uh, you know, you, you do that. And third, we say, <clears throat> we don't have a time. We don't have a time because we have lots of priorities, released work, development efforts, QA efforts, this efforts, that efforts. We don't have a time to complicate this, this, <clears throat> this monitoring, basic monitoring is place. And that is where that system is failed. See, everything is okay. Your CPU infra is under control. You know, all the apps are running. CPU is under control. Memory is under control. But system is failing. So how do you how do you know that? Uh, I mean, what is the problem? So now you will realize that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's hacked and hacking is not happening in one day. I, I hope you understand this. It's not happening in one day. It takes two to three years to hack. Correct, no? All of you? Slowly, slowly, they will get into the system. Create a, understand the environment, create a platform. And one day hacking that will happen, the preparation is of one year, two years. Correct, no? All of you? <clears throat> yes. So that means, Two years you were thinking my system is perfect running flawless and uh, everything is great but actually you you're being hacked and you re, you will realize that mistake and then you will seek for help right i have made a huge mistake okay and your cto might come to you and say what you know what you guys have done you know you should have done it much earlier and all stuff like that. So he's a cute CEO, CEO right? Right now. So, <clears throat> so that is where the monitoring, you know, one of the key word which is there from in the industry from last 20, 30 years. Uh, we all discuss monitoring, collecting the information, matrices, you know, it's nothing new world. Is there from last 20 30 years since we are running the software in the productions so monitoring is a systematic process of collecting and analyzing and using that information so collecting what information i'm talking about here information means any idea what information you are trying to collect and analyze and use anyone <clears throat> let me Ask this question to Praveen. 
<clears throat> so when I say information, what information you are talking about? The collecting of data. Collecting of matrices. So from matrices. today onwards, you let's start calling matrices. Okay. Data is not data can be different. See, everything is data nowadays. Correct, no? But okay. here, when we are in a in the world of monitoring, information means your matrix. Matrix is your information. What matrix I'm talking about? Anyone else? Let's say, uh, guys, you can volunteer yourself. Or else, I have to change my window all the time to see your name. Uh, Hari, what do you think? Hari. Yeah, so Pritam or anyone else, what kind of information I'm talking about? What kind of matrices? Might be server logs. Logs, okay, good input. Something else, someone else? The usage. Usage, uh, no. So this is like huh. So when I say information, information here in the world of monitoring, it can be matrices. Matrices like a CPU is a matrix. RAM is a matrix. Disk space uses is a matrix. System up and running is a matrix. Process up and down is a matrix. Services up and down is a matrix. Someone said logs also. Log is a matrix. A logs is a log, right? Log also contain information for monitoring. Right, and uh, I think you, some of you said like you want to learn APM in detail, correct? APM means what? You send a request to some website. I'm, I'm putting in a very simple way. You are sending a request to some website and then response is being generated. That is called trace, that's information. So here, monitoring is a process for collecting, first collect that data, CPU collection. I want to collect the, my system CPU, RAM, hard disk, network, and logs, and traces, and analyze using information to track a program's progress towards reaching its objective and to guide management decisions, whether it's in this matrix is a expected matrix or this matrix is, you know, is not expected metrics. So that's a monitoring, we all know that. So why do we do the monitoring? And I think more or less we understand that. We do the monitoring because we want to check the system health, health of the system, health of the server. We want to know the health of applications also. We want to know the user experience also, whether our users and users Let's say you are accessing the Amazon.com. You must be doing shopping. I think Flipkart sales is going on, right? So some of you might have done the, done the shopping as well. How was the experience? Browsing the website, navigating through the different different UIs, login, registration, uh, selecting the uh, product, putting in the cards, and then making a payment, and then checking the orders, and then tracing the orders, and all stuff like that. How was your experience? That's the experience I'm talking about. So why do we monitor? Simple things. We want to check the health of the server. We want to check the health of uh, uh, system. We want to help check the health of the uh, applications. We want to see the user experience. We want to check the user experience. And for that, we monitor. Make sense, guys? All of you? Yes, Rajesh. Yeah. So analyzing the long-term trends, comparing over time or experience, experiment groups, alerting, building dashboards, conducting ad hoc retrospective analysis, debugging and all stuff like that. These are the things we do as part of the monitoring. So we need monitoring. Okay, so these are the some stats. What are the primary uses of monitoring and observability data? So you see that most of the data which we use it for alerting, that data means information means same thing, matrices, logs, traces that data that's a data why we use it to create alerts to troubleshoot 
to track SLAs and SLOs. So I'm not sure um, how many of you are from SRE team and all, but if you are from SRE team, that you know that your job is relied on SLAs and SLOs and identifying areas of optimizations and reliable religion. So yes, these are the reasons for it. So now the thing is, okay, so we understand what is monitoring and why do we do, do that. But when you want to set up a monitoring, then you have to have a preparation plan in, with play, in place. So what preparation plan you may have it. So you'll decide what to monitor first thing and then how to monitor and then who will collect the data and when to monitor. These are the things you have to decide. Okay, what to monitor? You want to monitor Linux server, you want to monitor Windows server, you want to monitor Apache server, you want to monitor Apache applications, Tomcat application, database applications. How to monitor? The process. Who will collect the data? Agent, maybe you need something like an agent. When to monitor? The durations, every 15 seconds, every one minute every day also, every hour also. So these are the plan you need to decide actually. You need to have a plan. Okay. So here at the high level, when we do the monitoring, okay, when we do the monitoring, uh, I told you, right, monitoring is dead now. There's some, some other word has come, but I'm teaching you monitoring also, so you'll understand that. So let's say if I ask you tomorrow, Hey guys, can you go and set up a monitoring uh, using Datadog or any other tools also? See, there are a lot of tools available in the market right now. We have Datadog, New Relic, App Dynamics, Stanatis, Elastic, Grafana, Nagios, you know, Prometheus. So many solutions are there. So now, if I give you one tool and ask you, hey, go and set up a monitoring. Then what you will what you will set up what you will monitor so you'll say okay let's monitor the process just monitor this memory threading cpu memory disk load network let's monitor api call whether it's up and running or not response code is you are getting as per the api call means endpoint url actually so and stuff like that let's uh, let's monitor uh, the our servers also internals of the systems so are you comfortable so far? What to monitor and all? All of you? Yes. Yes, yes Rajesh. Yeah. So these are the things, these are the technical keywords, but at a high level, you want to monitor availability of the software, whether software is available or not, whether your software is secured or not, runtime environment is secure or not. You want to validate with some data. You want to see the performance of your applications and integration also you want to monitor. So yeah, lots of things. We have applications, services, operating systems, network. You capture the data. See that here. You capture the data for the different, different locations. Which data? Metric data and store at some place. Okay, so that is something which we do that. So this is the flow of monitoring, collect information, share information, review meetings, implement changes, review indicators, and also here. This is also flow. So you understand what is monitoring, why do we need it, process, plan, flow, and stuff like that. But why is monitoring so hard actually? The monitoring is hard because of lots of data sources are there. Lots of lots of data sources to collect the data, store the data. Just imagine. Uh, I don't know about your in, uh, environment like uh, production servers and all, but you know what? In the production server, thousands of servers are running. Not one and two, thousands of servers are running. That's the server. Some of the servers are Linux. Some of the servers are Windows. Some of the servers are having installed load balancers. Some of the servers are having web servers. Some of the servers will have app servers. Some of the servers will have a database. I'm just 
stating the only simple architecture by the way it can get complicated a lot when you are in a microservices so yes lots of data sources nowadays we have okay and how do you how do you measure that how do you measure that the your users are satisfied or not satisfied look at this one good image here two different user request to the different devices different isps isps means internet service provider reaching to the dns servers dns servers to the place where your domain name then load balancers load balancers to the multiple microservices multiple database and here one user is getting the response time uh, in 300 milliseconds and one user is getting a response time in 1.5 seconds so tell me what is your job i think you guys wants to learn monitoring platform so what is your job then what job you are going to perform tell me what job you are going to perform anyone i did not understand your question uh, rajesh so question is very simple i will i log in to amazon.com and did a lot of things on amazon.com and my overall response time was 30 second okay my response oh, sorry 3 second 3 second okay okay but you access the amazon.com and your response time was 1 second so this is the reality this is the reality now let's go back to amazon.com and sre team those who are taking care of the monitoring as well so what would be their responsibility i am asking their responsibility you had experience 3 second i had experience 1 second uniformity has to be there right performance job i'm showing i'm uh, see there a lot of discussion we can make it but the the question i am asking sre team of amazon what would be their work load balancing say? no performance of the sir. no i i'm asking their responsibility sre responsibility see load balancers are there no i talked about it again yes. look at my question i said look at the image also request is going through the different devices it can be laptop different browser different isp different load balancer different app server different web server different database server a response time for one user is 300 millisecond and another is one user is 1.5 second my question is very simple what would be the work roles and responsibility of a sri engineer in indirect way i am saying what you are going to do because you are learning monitoring platform what you are going to do tell so, me optimization they might compare and uh, make sure what is that is the difference for both the users in the time frame correct so you are going to only one work you are going to do because if you are learning today next 5 days a one platform so your job is to find out why why this girl response time is 1.5 second why why where is the problem is it problem in the devices isp dns server load balancer application server web server database server network third party library pay payment gateway where is the problem where is the problem where is the problem okay understood that all of you yes sir yeah so this is the types of monitoring which we have white box monitoring and we call it a black box monitoring okay so two types of monitoring we have white box black box right now i'm not emphasizing too much just
Yeah, so I'm not emphasizing on too much on white box and black box, okay? Because I don't want to complicate too much. But in terms of data dog right now, these two monitoring is possible. So here at a high level, I want to tell you, okay? So uh, white box monitoring focuses on the internals of the environment, internals where you get the fetch the internal information. Black box monitoring fetches the external information. External information means uh, about the CPU, RAM, network, load balances and all stuff like that. That's external. Internal is inside application they will get into that. Okay, like an APM is an inside applications. Logs inside application so they'll get into the inside applications and find try to find out this information so yeah uh, these are the list of white box monitoring and prometheus javix neuralic and uh, list of black box monitoring also so but nowadays a uh, data dog is supporting both by the way you using apm that is not the case so when you want to implement the monitoring Okay, so these are the phases you have to do. So first of all, you have to decide what you want to monitor, measurement, then collect that data and store it, then analyze it from the storage, then alert and visualization. So if you look at this here, one thing which you need it for collections, analysis, alerting and visualization, one is storage, right? Correct now? Where the, all the data uh, can be stored. Agree with me? Yes. Yeah. So we'll put the context uh, here, which tool is good for it. But remember this. First, you have to decide what you want to monitor. For example, CPU. Then you collect it and store it. Then analyze it, whether the CPU is going beyond certain uh, you know, threshold or not. Alerting it and visualizing it. So some of the, some of the things I will ignore it in this uh, slides because it's uh, too many things to talk about it but this slide i think i feel like sh like a sharing so guys nowadays in the world of observability or monitoring uh, they will uh, say when you when you want to create a monitoring uh, alerting then they will say hey what do you want to create alert for okay so this standard has been set by the industry and they say, hey, let's do one thing. Let's set up alert for the, the four golden signals. Okay, four golden signals. Now the question you may have in your mind when people will discuss what is a golden signals then? So then golden signals will help you to set up alerting and monitoring for four data. And one is called latency. Second one is traffic. Third one is errors. And fourth is saturations. Okay. So latency, traffic, error, and saturation. Will you remember that? This golden signal concept? All of you? Hello? So please keep in your mind, I'm just feeding a new standard keyword in this uh, domain. So that, yes, Deepak, everything will be shared with you guys. Okay, so latency, traffic, errors, and saturations. Okay, so some of the slides, I'll just skip it because I don't want to give you too much of jargon so you get lost in start itself. So now you understand about the monitoring world, correct? All of you? Any questions on that monitoring? What is monitoring? Why do we need monitoring? Uh, what are the things to do in monitoring? What to monitor and all these phases and sort of it. All of you understood? Any questions, any doubts? Any questions, any doubts? No, Rajesh. Okay. But I said, I'm going to teach you observability. So the question is, what is observability then? So actually, you know what, guys? 
monitoring is dead yes monitoring is dead so if you have come to this session and thinking i will learn monitoring then let me tell you i cannot teach you monitoring because dead from dead already we been doing monitoring from last 20 years but today in this session i will teach you how to set up observability not monitoring so the question you may have in your mind what is observ uh, what is a uh, uh, observability so please understand it's a very simple difference but you have to understand that monitoring tells you whether a system is working or not system is working means cpu is lesser than 50% or more than 50% ram is more than 50% or less than 50% or your application is accessible or not accessible okay so monitoring will tell you something like that correct no all of you yes but you know what when you set up a observability it will let you ask why is not working so let's say uh, if your cpu is lesser than 50% then observability process will let you ask why this is 50% okay why the my cpu is uh, consume uh, let's say put it uh, let's put it in this way why this my cpu utilization is more than 90% or more than 80% that's a that's a worrisome right that's a not a good sign right so why it is taking my cpu of this particular server in my data center why is taking more than 80% why where is the problem the problem is with applications the problem is with uh, some third party applications networking request where is the log for it where is the matrices for it where is the all other details for it so why is not working that that is the difference between observability and monitoring monitoring is very flat yes or no observability let you ask okay show me the logs show me the matrices show me the application show me the processes everything and then you will get to know okay yeah these are the reasons so observability will help you to set up that uh, you know same thing so observability means assembling all fragments all fragment means from logs multiple types of logs you have system logs we have applications logs you have network logs you have load balancer logs you have different different all fragments of logs and monitoring tools the one which you are discussing and organize them in a such a way so it gives you actionable knowledge knowledge which you can use it so you don't have to spend time on uh, troubleshooting too much everything you get spoon feed it cpu is more than 80% utilized so for that particular server you have a logs you have a matrices you have a everything in front of you through the observability so you will take a actionable no, actionable things so that's kind of things which we have in observability so yes monitoring and observability once upon a time there was a monitoring but observability is a superset of monitoring it provides not only high level overviews of the system health but also highly granular insight into the implicit failure mode of the system in addition an observable system furnishes ample context about inner working unlocking the ability to uncover deeper systematic issues monitoring on the other hand is best suited to report the overall health of system and derive alerts so if you want to know the why it's not working observability you should try to focus on observability so look at this here this is the pyramid so monitoring is focusing on alerting and overview of it through the dashboard whereas observability getting into the debugging profiling dependencies analysis and anticipating the future as well okay so when you set up observability you have to use all monitoring tools which using that predictable failures but you know in observability you have to also add the automated testings also 
okay so testing better best effort verification of correctness and put it up together testing plus all the best practices of testing and all the best practices of predictable failure in through the monitoring together and that is basically best effort simulation of failure modes and that's called observability okay so monitoring system should address two question what is broken and why while observability cover a larger scope monitoring is mainly used in terms of matrix monitoring in summary observability is a property of the system and monitoring is an activity we perform on a system so look at this here when you set up a observability hierarchy so you have to get all the data of the past past means the logs which has happened in the past you are you have to get it diagnostic traces that means request to the website it has happened in the past so you have to diagnose and you have to get the present data that means cpu ram and all stuff like that and you have to get it in the dashboard so, and prediction how can you do that so based on the logging tracing the matrices you can do the predicts prediction using stats and signal and that is the observability hierarchy so observability gain understanding actively monitoring consume information passively observability ask a question based on hypothesis why is not working something like that and monitoring ask a question based on the dashboard observability built to tame dynamic environment why with changing complexity whereas a monitoring built to maintain static environment with a little variation now the question is what is a dynamic environment and what is a static environment anyone would like to comment on it let me dynamic is which is something keep on changing yeah example for it cloud cloud yes but something else something else see uh, all of some of you have worked with a container docker and kubernetes and sort of it i studied it but did not work on it yeah okay so that's called dynamic environment nowadays you know what we are not running our applications in virtual machines like vms and all right so we are running in a container containers yes so containers are dynamic that means let's say i created 1000 container today and after let's say you want to upgrade it whole container will replaced i say replaced new container will come and how much time within a few seconds so that's called dynamic environment nowadays uh, in kubernetes we call it a pod so i would request suggest to spend some time with the new technologies also spend 2 hours every day uh, for the learning new technology so your skill set will not become obsolete because only you can do that no one else will build to maintain static environment means static environments in vms virtual machines uh, most of the time most of the time it will never change if you have started one vm and you are in production you will keep running on the same thing and you will keep re releasing the new software in the same thing. so that's a vm virtual machines cloud like aws azure and uh, google cloud and all uh, when you create a virtual machines over there then it's a static environment you hardly change it you don't replace that so something like that so yes so monitoring was built for the static environment physical servers and all virtual servers but observability which is becoming very popular to maintain the dynamic environment why because monitoring is not sufficient for for the dynamic environment we have to have a different concept of thinking okay so preferred by developers which is observability of the system with variability and unknown permutations whereas the monitoring used by developers of system with little change and known permutations so yeah this is at the high level we understand so observability help you to focus on the metrics tracing and log capturing 
whereas monitoring only focuses on availability. System is available, okay. Performing well, okay or not. Capacity, under planned or more than that and something like that. So now the question is, how do you do that setting up observability? How do you collect the metrics? How do you collect the traces? How do you collect the uh, logs? So this concept, we call it a telemetry. Okay, telemetry. Tele means remote, metry means metro means measure. So collect the matrices from the remote locations. So what matrices you are going to cover? Uh, you are going to uh, uh, collect. So you are going to collect the melt. What do you call it? A melt. Four essentials telemetry data types. So always, I'll, I'll put it in a very simple way. If anyone will ask you to set up observability and they will ask you, hey, how can you, how can you uh, set up observability? Then simply you say, hey, we have to collect the melt actually. Melt means M for matrices. Matrix means Linux matrix, Windows matrix. Matrix means CPU, RAM, hard disk, network. Matrix of Apache, matrix of Tomcat, matrix of database, matrix of this, matrix of that. That's called M, matrices. Then you have need to tell, we need to collect events also. What is events? Anyone would like to tell me? What is events? Event is a error log. Process, process of the specific metrics. Ah, yes. Events actually, you know what? Events is also matrix only, but there is a difference between the events and matrix. So matrix will be continuously captured, but events will not be conti continuously captured. Events means, let me put it in this way. You log in, it's an event. Log out, it's an event. And you, when you log in and when you log out, I don't know. Okay. You, you make a payment, it's an event. You, you uh, delete something, some some important things is an event. You add something is an event. Are you getting my words? All of you? Yeah. And logs. Logs means I think I don't have to teach you. You know that there is a logs from the Linux, logs for the Windows system, logs from applications also, logs from the network also. And traces means APM. APM. You want to collect, if you do you want to do the APM, application performance monitoring. So for that you have to collect the trace. How to collect the trace, I'll teach you. So basically if someone said, someone says to you, hey, uh, what is your plan? So you can say, we want to set up observability for our product. So next question, how do you do that? So you have to collect the melt. We have to collect the matrices, events, logs and traces. Now they'll say, okay, collection is okay, but which tool you are going to do that? Then you can say, hey, we are collect, going to collect the melt using the Datadog or any other tools like New Relic or hell lot of tools, which I said. So many tools are there. We have a New Relic, Prometheus, you know, and stuff like that. So we are going to collect. After the collections, you are going to analyze it. And analyzing, you need a very intuitive UI. Analyze means analyze the metrics, analyze the events, analyze the logs, analyze the uh, traces. And after that, you think, oh yeah, these are the key metrics. CPU is a key matrix. RAM is a key matrix. Uh, disk is a key matrix. Events means login, logout is a key matrix. Logs, if it is an error with the logs, that's a key, key logs. And traces where the response time is more than X number of seconds, that is the key traces. So what you want to do? You want to monitor it, alert it. You want to create alert for it. Are you understanding all of you? Hello? Yeah. So yes. So three pillars of observability, metrics, traces, and logs. And you need to collect, analyze, set alert, and dashboard. Four things you have to do. Okay. So traces, which we discussed, relationship between events, Matrices, measurement of an event, logs, human, re human re readable events, and things like that. So observability means logging plus monitoring plus tracing plus visualizations and so on.
Now there are some differentiation factor. You can see that. And here monitoring will tell you which is my system available. But observability will tell you how long is my system up. Monitoring will tell you is my system healthy. Where observability, what is my system doing? Or monitoring will tell you where, when and where did it occur. And observability let you know why did it occur. Recovery means monitoring will tell you is my system is backed up. And observability will tell you what can I do to prevent the issues from reoccurring. So these are the things which we have. It. So what is the matrix? I think more or less we understand by now. But I'll put it in this way. Matrix is something. It can be anything. Matrix is like uh, collect from the system applications, applications also from the you know infrastructure like Linux matrix, Windows matrix, Apache matrix, MySQL matrix, Docker matrix, Kubernetes matrix. So this thing. So this is different different kind of matrix which we have. Work matrix, resource matrix, events matrix. So here, work matrix means you get the throughput information, success rate, error rate, performance. Resource matrix means utilization, saturation, error availability. By the way, resource matrix. Have you heard about this? Is the four signals, four golden signals we create, right? Based on that, and events like a code changes, alerts, scaling events, and so. So these are the so the detailing about the matrices. And events, logs, traces, and all this stuff. So, more or less, this is the conclusion. So, guys, what we are trying to do as part of this session is we are trying to set up a observability. So, using observability. We are going to collect, please hear me out. We are going to collect the matrices. We are going to collect the logs. We are going to collect the trace. We are going to collect all these things, store it at one place, analyze it, create alerts and create a dashboard. And if any issues coming up, let's say there's one issues which is coming up like in one server, CPU utilization is more than 80%. So the tool should provide me why it is 80%. What process is running? What applications running? What services running? Where is the application log? Where is the uh, system logs? Where is the traces? Which request it has come to the server so that the CPU utilization has gone up? Tracing the request, everything we should have at one place. And the moment you have everything at one place, that means you have achieved your observability. That means when you go for debugging purpose and you have every sort of data at one window, that means you can say you have achieved the observability and your job is done on that front. So all of you understood that what is observability and how it is different from monitoring. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Last few minutes I do I how much I have heard from you. It's clear. Good. Okay. So now this so is now this is the only discussions I am having it, and after that will get into the things. So look at this here, some of the stuff. You know what? Observability is also hard. Why? Let's understand this. Look at this, how we are evolving. So earlier we were running the software in a physical server, then virtual server, then migrated to cloud. Nowadays we are running in the Kubernetes and Docker and container and stuff like that. So these are the things.
now software architecture also has moved it so you know earlier monolithic architecture we had it monolithic means ms office you install in your ms office you install in your laptop right everything they have it in one package so that's called monolithic then we migrated we got internet and migrated to soa service oriented architecture so we had a concept of web server app server database server and now we have a concept of microservices meant each service got distributed to too many microservices one function is equal to one microservices so it's like this so it's become a architecture change also so now we have too many microservices look at this here so this is a map of one of the applications which is running on the aws and you see that how many microservices you know to perform one request how many microservices they are you know transacting and you need to locate that uh, problem where is the problem which the microservices is the problem first on aws server. which services which server and all stuff like that so too many microservices are you understanding all of you all of you and these microservices communicate through uh, apis right yes yes so what are the solutions which you want to learn so these are the solution right now available in the market for setting up observability application availability is it up network availability server availability application performance and application reliability network performance network reliability server performance server reliability so we have so many software datadog new relic splunk elastic app dynamics dynatrace and graph so yes one of these tools today we are going to learn to set up observability and this is the end of this session any question guys along with that you can access our other tutorials such as docker ansible jenkins terraform splunk aws azure and various other devops related premium tutorials with our channel membership if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact@devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video to get our channel membership click on to the join button select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely is be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching Hello everyone if you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under devops devsecops sre data ops gitops etc kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button you would have access to 100s of playlist and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership enjoy